Hi there. Hey, hi, Garnett. I'm getting everybody admitted as they pop up, so. Good. Oh, how are you today? Good, you like the hat? Yeah, kind of sporting the Isabel's look. My hair's a mess, so. I know. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still getting used to it being a little longer, so it gets in my face and, you know. I know. So, I know. Yeah. I've been doing a barrette of all things. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. see. Getting everybody in here. Hello. Hi there. I see Daniel's having trouble. Come on. There we go. Yep. There we are. All right. Hi, Barry. Good afternoon. We're uh, working on getting everybody afternoon. admitted into the room. All righty. I lost Daniel and I lost. Somebody yeah. else. <laughs> they'll be back. Well, they'll, yeah, they will. There's Dan. Hi, Dan. Nice spot there, Dan. <laughs> he doesn't hear me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. You got a nice, nice view there. Hi, Kathy. All right, who is with the iPad? <laughs> what is this? Uh. All right, folks, we'll give, uh, give folks a few more minutes to get in here. I don't know if our, our guest is in yet. From so, Republic, I am. Yeah. Oh, good. Hi. Is this Carrie? Yes, it is. Oh, very yeah. good. Thank you. Really, you must be the iPad mm -hmm. person then. <laughs> I'm the you. iPad person. Yeah, yeah, you're incognito. Very good. Working from home. Oh, very nice. Good. Hey, Good. I had to tell you, I looked you up and your Facebook page popped up and you have the Grand Canyon in the background. I really like that. Did you did you hike it? Did you do a rim trip or what did you do? My wife probably did that one. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> you were in the photo. so <laughs> We did, depending on which one it is, we have uh, done the... Um, um, rafting down the, yeah. the canyon. Oh, nice. No, you were on oh, the rim. So, yeah. you know. That was fun. I'm sure it was. It was one of those weird days, though. It was so hot, oh. and the water stays year-round at like 42 degrees. So on oh. one hand, you get splashed and breath away, and on the other hand, it's like after about two seconds of getting splashed, you're like, oh, is that refreshing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let me see who I've got here. I got Linda, I got Daniel, no Mark. 
Waiting at um, yeah. uh, no Sorry. Rana. Hmm. Okay. Kathy Demetria. All right. Barry. All right. All right. Well, in the interest of time, because I and I'm recording this so that we can um, share it with the folks who who weren't able to join us. Um, if I if I could uh, just take a few minutes to just do a little bit of housekeeping, and then we'll get you started, Carrie. Sure. And uh, sure. basically, my intent was to have you. I know you got the questions in advance, mm -hmm. correct? So you know mm -hmm. that's. I hope yes. that was really helpful to you. Um, yes. So with this, I'll, do, I'll just do a really quick roll call of our members um, just for minutes, taking minutes, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about structure. Here's Rana. So uh, Linda Escott, are you here? I saw her, there she is. Linda's here, all right. Um, Daniel DeFranco, I see ya. Here. Very good, thank you. Mark Epstein. I don't see Mark. Patrick? I don't see Patrick. Rana, I see you. I saw Here. you wave. Yep. Hi, how are you? Kathy North? Here. And Demetria Tyrion? Here. And Barry Johnson? Here. All right, very good. So we've got majority of our crew. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to record this and then we'll make it available to everybody later. Um, my plan is to basically turn it over to Kerry ASAP and let him answer the questions that you all were so kind to send to Rana. And Rana, thank you so much for coordinating that. It was huge help um, for me. And then afterwards, Carrie, we'll let you go. And we've got some housekeeping things that we need to do on our end as a committee. Um, so with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Carrie. Is it Rattinger? Is that how you say Rattinger. Rattinger? Rattinger. Rattinger. Close. All, right, very, close. Good. <laughs> all right. Very good. You know, sometimes I can say it like a German today. I chose to say it like American. So, <laughs> Uh, with Republic Services, I know you're a busy man, so we really appreciate you taking the time. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, sir. And I will try to answer the questions as best I can. Now, if I don't get to the real point of the question for some reason, maybe I just didn't understand where you're headed with it, please let me know. Um, okay. So as we go down the list, um, I'll just do it this way. We'll start with number one. Um, does everybody have a list of the questions so I don't have to read each one of them, or do you want me to? I suggest reading them for the audience. Okay. Number one, in Douglas Republic provided a list of acceptable and non-acceptable items, which is posted on the city website as glasses being acceptable, but on the Republic website it is not listed, which is correct. Um, currently, we are transitioning, unfortunately. Um, to not accepting glass. Glass is accepted more on a regional basis if there's a market for it. Also, if you can get the material to the point where it's actually worth something, uh, most of the time what that requires is a huge investment in, in these uh, MRFs. Um, but you, in order to do that, you also need a lot of uh, volume to be able to to support that investment, which we just don't have. So currently, uh, we are in the process of not accepting and we'll be communicating that glass. Uh, that goes along with number two, if you're not recycling glass, what happens to the glass placed in the recycled bins? Is it considered a contaminated load? It's not considered a contaminated load. That really makes it different than many other potential contaminants. Um, it basically just goes off the end of the line and goes into the trash. So it ends up at the landfill. Um, hmm. But there, there's so much breakage and whatnot that you have that anyhow, even in the best of times, best of markets, uh, there's so much breakage on the, or on the uh, residential side because of the fact that it goes into a truck that compacts it so when you dump it in the truck, there's breakage during the compaction process all day long. This truck is compacting, that breaks it. And then also when you get to the uh, um, recycle facility and dumping it there, that also contributes to considerable breakage. So it does go off. And like I said, even the best of times, quite a bit of glass ended up in the landfill. Carrie, can I ask a quick question? Sure. I think I know the answer to this. The sure. acronym you said, MRF. So it must be... I, I don't even want to guess. <laughs> Material Recovery Facility. Material Recovery Facility. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. 
We try to make okay. things easy, but sometimes we can. <laughs> M-R-F. All right, got it. Thank you. Sorry. Please. Uh, one of the top five materials that are currently the easiest and most profitable materials for Republic to recycle. Do you expect that chain to change dramatically in the next 18 months? We're a little bit different in Michigan. MRFs have a bit of a disadvantage in Michigan than they do across the country because of the bottle bill. The bottle bill in reality is a good thing because it does recover considerably more material than if it was just being picked up at the curb. The problem is that one of the best materials in there is aluminum cans, as well as your pop bottles, things like that, that add to value. Pop bottles are PET number one. Um, those are not in there. Obviously the sale material helps subsidize the, the operation of a MRF, um, but those are not in there in the state of Michigan. So for what we have in the state of Michigan, about the best things you can see in uh, uh, recycle load would be cardboard, box board, which would be your, your uh, cereal boxes, tin and metal cans, and then PET and HDPE, which is your number one and number two plastic. Um, examples of that would be PET would be water bottles. Um, that's the biggest amount of PET we get. HDPE number two are gonna be milk jugs, they're going to be your laundry detergent and fabric softener. That actually is <clears throat> consistently without aluminum, that number two typically is one of the most valuable in there. However, plastic, the value of plastic and the marketability of plastic goes up and down with the price of oil because it is a petroleum product. Um, also, I want to point out HDPE, even within that, it gets separated into two different categories. One would be clear, uh, basically, which would be your milk and your uh, gallon water bottles, uh, jugs, what whatnot. And then your uh, pigmented, which would be your detergent bottles, fabric softener. The pigmented doesn't have the same value but it still is something that you can get uh, something out of as far as revenues out of. Uh, I don't see a big change in that, in those particular materials uh, that are the easiest and most profitable. Um, the only thing that really changes is the marketability or the pricing of it and, and the value of it goes up and down. And we've had major swings over the last number of years uh, and even being able to get rid of some things like cardboard, uh, there's times that's had to sit because of contamination. These MRFs are working as hard as they can to make the product as clean as they can. And we need help all the way down the line, but <clears throat> the end, uh, processors, partly because there's, with China uh, basically shutting off the rest of the world on the, on the recycling and um, the different processors realize that they can, they're a big commodity themselves right now and they can dictate to the rest of the recycling world that, hey, this has to be cleaner than it ever was and, it, and it's actually gone just so everybody knows, I don't know if uh, many of you have heard this, but once upon a time, you had anywhere from 10 to 20% contamination in recycling, even after it was processed, it was, processed, it was high. Um, but China led the charge on that. They said, we're tired of you trashing our company with all this uh, unrecyclable material and actually garbage in with it. So they reduce that to half of 1%, which really made it, they basically cut off the world because everyone was saying we can't get it to that. So uh, the local places, their, their prices went down dramatically. Uh, they knew they could. And that's really kind of what happened. It's a long story, but that's the short version of it. Um, number four, one of the most difficult costs we 
materials to recycle that are currently on their accepted list and why. Uh, prior to this, I would have said glass, uh, but currently it's three through seven just because uh, it's a lot of it's hard to deal with. A lot of it is not necessarily, you know, they throw these recycled triangles on the bottom of things. That just means it's made out of a certain type of plastic. That doesn't mean there's a market for it. So that's very misleading, those, those symbols on the bottom of them. And three through seven plastics really are the most difficult. Now, some of them can be valuable if you had huge volume of it, but MRFs don't have that. They don't have the space to, to take a particular type of number five, let's say, and, and, and uh, just store that one type. There's, there's very niche type of uh, materials in each one of these that may have value, but overall, three through seven are very difficult and they're really not a lot of value. Okay. Um, number six or number five on average, what percent of recyclables picked up are actually recycled? Are they hand or machine sorted and where? Um, your material is going to the old chef uh, facility, Recycle Murph in, in uh, just outside of Holland. And uh, uh, what we did when we were in the yellow bag mode, um, the city of Holland did a study where they actually followed the truck all the way to the MRF, pulled the material out, sorted it themselves, and, and did weights. Mm -hmm. And they found out that what was actually recyclable was only about 25% of what were in those yellow bags. So we transit, we're in the process of transitioning the uh, city of Holland. We transitioned in Saugatuck and Douglas already. Um, with that transition, it's above 80%. That's gonna depend on any given day, um, but it's, it's, it's better than 80%. I would say you're actually gonna be closer to 90% now, now that we're in the cart versus, like I said, the 25% that came up in the study out of Holland. So I want to, I'm going to back up real quick, make sure I yep. was following what you said. Um, yep. So with the city of Holland did the study with the yellow bags, they followed it all the way to the MRF and found that only 20% of the items 20%. in those yellow bags. But when you transitioned over, and I know Ken Freestone has been uh, a part of these discussions with us. And I think he was kind of one of the instigators as was Hannah Huggett, mm -hmm. uh, the young gal. So when you guys transitioned, when they transitioned over to the carts, mm -hmm. then they were recycling how much again? Up, it's better than 80%. Okay. And it was just, was it because of documentation that was on the cart? What, what was the difference? The, well, from, the biggest them? thing is with, with the yellow bag process, what happens is you put the material in the yellow bag. The yellow bag goes into a truck that compacts it with great pressure. So you can imagine what happens. That bag bursts. And in every one of these loads, you have liquids that comes in contact, ruins it. So, so that's what was happening. The stuff was getting contaminated through the whole process because it was in with the trash. When it's separated out of the trash, the biggest issue you have still, not you, we have, um, is contamination, people putting things that are not yeah. acceptable. I'll give you an example. Maybe there's a plastic uh, pot, planter pot type of thing. Those aren't acceptable. We want, when you talk plastics, typically you're going to want the, the uh, um, or a chair. We see, we see hoses, we see those resin chairs because they're plastic. People think it's that. If we can reduce the amount of contamination in, then it allows us to process it in a, in a better, more pure, if you will, procedure. Because um, they are we, are, we have a combination of hand and machine, machine sorting. There are people on lines that pick things out, but the, but the machines also uh, do some. We're, we're not as... Um, mechanized and automated as many MRFs in big cities are because they can dump tens of millions of dollars in these things because they have 
the throughput in terms of the tonnage to pay for it. Mm -hmm. In areas where you don't have that, it's harder to justify that big of an investment if you don't have the volume coming through. So you do the best you can. Um, number six, what are some things that residents could be doing differently that would help or public increase the rate of materials successfully recycled? First thing would be don't put it in a bag. So don't bag it. And then really what we ask everybody to do is three words, empty, clean, and dry. So don't put things in that are real wet. Don't put in peanut butter jars that are still have a bunch of peanut butter or, or one of my favorites, uh, ketchup or spaghetti sauce or things like that, because that contaminates uh, the things that come in there, especially the cardboard, which is very easily recyclable. Mm -hmm. um, do you have an example of a successful recycling program that involves both residential and commercial that we should consider and model ourselves after? Uh, the thing here is that there is no one size fits all model. Um, for one reason, because like I mentioned earlier, the regionality of what's acceptable and what isn't, some of it's just, there's only certain areas in the country where that these processing facilities that accept material are at and they're taken from local. So we would obviously have to ship it a long way and they don't want ours and get enough from local. Uh, that's one of the, the issues with that. Um, uh, the, um, the, the biggest thing I think when I, when I look at that question um, that impacts Saugatuck and Douglas is you're, you're quite unique, not, completely unique. We see that along the lakeshore, but you have quite a bit of transient um, residents or visitors, if you will. And that's the hardest thing we find in those type of communities all the way up. And I manage all the way up from just south of Ludington. I don't deal with Ludington, but I, I deal uh, all the way down the lakeshore to the Indiana border. So I see all these communities down there that get the big influx of, of tourists and renters. And the hardest part is getting the renters to participate because a lot of them are just there for the week. They want to have fun or the weekend, they want to have fun and they're leaving and they're not going to go out of their way. And I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just giving you the reality of what we see. Those are the areas where we see the challenge, the biggest challenge of getting uh, participation. The regular residents that are there year round, they are pretty good at participating. It's it's those uh, the challenge of getting the transient uh, visitors, homeowners, renters, however, to uh, participate. Uh, landfill versus waste to energy or recycling. Um, can you explain the process to determine which method is used and the location each happens? or well, they're all based pretty much on proximity to each one of those. Um, for instance, there is a waste of energy over in Kent County. Um, however, their cost is more expensive than the local landfills, plus you have the transportation of getting things to the uh, waste of energy facility. Now, what makes the energy to facilitate uh, energy or uh, waste to energy facilities um, successful really is flow control. And that's what they have in Kent County that says, hey, if it's generated here, you have to bring it here. And you, you either do it to their landfill or to their uh, waste to energy facility. Um, but they are at a higher rate, like I said. Uh, recycling is going to be the same thing. You're going to take your recyclables to the local MRF. You're not going to, for the most part, transport it long distances because that kind of uh, just adds to the carbon footprint and, and starts to pick away at, at your environmental impact. Okay. And I'm, I'm going quickly, so please don't be afraid if you have questions to interrupt me. Yeah, y'all feel uh, free to pop in there with questions if you have them. I'm writing mine down at the end because quite a few. Okay. 
Uh, for the cities of Saugatuck and Douglas, does Republic have different contracts for condominiums or other homeowners association which vary from those negotiated for individuals? Uh, basically, the answer to that is yes, but they're specific to the volume, to the frequency of pickup, you know, what size container, et cetera. Where's the location? Is it in a back and tucked in a parking lot versus on the curbside uh, as we do for, for residential trash? So, so there are contracts. They are different, but they're specific to the needs um, of those uh, condominiums or homeowner associations. Uh, does Republic attend, help sponsor, or participate with community activities such as concert, outdoors, events, and socials? So uh, we do try to be the the good corporate citizen. Um, however, I do have to say we do have to operate within a budget, and so if there are specifics to that, I would ask that you let us know, but let us know well in advance because we have to get everything budgeted because we do get. We service many communities and we get, as you can imagine, if we're in the community, we get a ton of requests to, to uh, uh, sponsor or be involved. And like I said, we want to be, we want to be the good corporate citizen, but we have to do it within uh, the guidelines that we're given by our, our corporate and, you know, within reason financially as well. Um, okay. Contracts given Republic's existing contracts with the city of Saugatuck and Douglas, are the cities free to pursue waste reduction opportunities with other composting services? I guess my question there would be, what are the specific needs? Um, because the problem with that is we set up pricing for our compost or yard waste, if you will, programs based on what we know we have out there. And if you're asking me if someone can come in and start picking those away, therefore driving our revenue down, but we're still driving trucks all around town, making our costs go up per customer, uh, I don't think that would necessarily be fair to us. So my question would be, are there specific needs or suggestions and we possibly can work through it or, you know, I need more specifics on that and see what we can do. Uh, to for us to provide this the service um, so carry along those lines do does republic have a composting capability is there a location for composting is it on site we we use uh, typically we'll use th third party um, facilities for composting but when we talk about composting typically what we're talking about is yard waste, leaves, grass, twigs, things like that, small branches, small in diameter because they can't be handled at the composting facilities. Um, so we do use third party on that. So we are, just to digress a little bit, we're, we're probably gonna do a, a community survey later on this summer, early fall and that would probably be a very good question to ask. If we wanted to provide cop composting, what would folks um, like to see composted, I guess would be the question. Right. Um, so, it would, and that kind of information I assume would be very helpful to, to you then? It, it would correct? be, um, I will say this, I was in a meeting in the city of Grand Haven where there were three or four restaurants, coffee shops, breweries total that that were interested, and, and I do have to say, not that they said anything wrong, but just to, to give you an idea of one's perspective versus someone else's perception, their thought was, oh, we have all, quote unquote, a ton of material. And we said, well, we could possibly work with someone through us, work with someone to come and get the, the uh, um, material picked up, how much do you have? Well, we have a lot, all right, how much do you have? They have about 30 pounds a week. I'm here to tell you that's not a lot. Not when you're talking about sending a huge truck all the way up there just for a few customers. The cost, and now don't get me wrong, You can, as long as it's legal, you'll find a company that'd be willing to do it, but the cost would be so prohibited. I mean, you'd be talking hundreds of dollars just to go pick up that 
that uh, small amount. So there has to be enough to, once again, if, especially if you're looking at trying to make an environmental impact, you don't want to take a truck and have it run all the way up or around picking up three, four places that are spread out for only 100 or 200 pounds. The, I'm here to tell you the environmental impact is much greater than the, the benefits of, of, of doing something like that. But it would still be good to know because, I mean, if, if you don't know what's out there and what the, the needs are, then there's no way you can try to work on solving the problem. And I apologize, I'm going to ask an, a follow-up then. What, no, what pound, what weight would be worth your while, I guess? That's well, the right way to put it. Here, here's what I think at this point. I mean, one of the things we're, we constantly work on is to see what, what does a community have if it's just something like coffee grounds. Um, but if you're looking... Maybe we could talk to our compost sites and see if they'd be willing to accept that. If you're talking about trying to get compostable plastic forks or cups or plates of any kind, paper, I mean paper, not plastic, I'm sorry, um, that are compostable and degrade degradable, um, biodegradable, I think we need to know exactly what we're talking about so we can approach someone on our end to find out can they handle it if we bring it into them because in some cases we're a hauler and in the yard waste that's what we are in the the murf the recycling and the trash we're the hauler plus we also have the landfill and we also have the uh, recycle facility but in the composting field we're, we're we haven't necessarily gotten involved locally uh. All right. Do you mind, well, somebody sent this question through the chat, who are the third party haulers for compost that you all work with and where are their facilities are they in the, the area? Facilities? Or? Yeah. Well, um, we have one that we're trying to work out with, but I do know the others, there's one, um, right, well, first of all, there's one, our biggest one that we send most of our material at, not necessarily all of yours is up here in Grand Haven, Adverb Planks. Which they do an interesting thing, by the way. When you when you talk about people trying to find solutions, give you a quickie on on Verplanks. Verplanks is a dock where they bring in uh, salt for communities for the winter. They bring in aggregate stone and whatnot. So they have the big freighters coming in. And they're about the only ones that need the type of depth in the channel of the Grand River here that they're about the only ones who would use it being dug and dredged that deep. So what they did is they made an agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers. You dredge it so we get the ships in. We'll take the dredgings. And they've taken that dredgings then and started a composting site, mixing the dredgings with yard waste. Now, that was not the case 10 years ago. But it happened when the river started, you know, the water levels were going down. They had to come up with a creative uh, alternative, and, and that was a great, a great alternative. So it's solving a number of problems. Um, so that's kind of what we look at. There's, there's others. I, um, they changed the name, so I can't remember the, the other one we do, uh, which is just south side of it's between Grand Haven and Holland. Um, they change your name, so I don't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. All right. Um, specifically, is how, how is it Republic accountable to us with regard to recycling? What steps are being taken to ensure accountability? Um, the biggest thing we're doing there was eliminating the yellow bags which increased the, the recovery rates. Um, as far as accountability, um, we do give tours. We don't, I, I, like I said, of the, of the recycle facility, like I said, it's not uh, the Taj Mahal, but it is usable. So if someone were to question um, 
where the, the material goes if they wanted uh, your group, for instance, probably could arrange something along those lines okay. of I a see. tour. Oh, that'd be good. Uh, I see Daniel DeFranco has his hand up. What's up, Daniel? Yeah, th this, this goes back to the, the previous issue. So, so Kira, I just uh, want to be clear and kind of like what I'm, I'm hearing from you. Um, it sounds like if, if we did want to pursue some sort of alternative composting project, you all would like the first swing at responding to our needs. Um, Absolutely. But if it's but if it's something that you automat uh, that that you would determine that it's you know it's it's not um, feasible for you to handle, we would be free to pursue a project independently. So that that's kind of my question. Like if we wanted to do something that was community based that that may also serve as kind of like an awareness to the you know the community about um, recycling and education um, that again may not be an amount of composting that you could feasibly pick up we wouldn't be prohibited from doing that no we would, we would ask that you you get with us uh, we sit down and talk about it and, and I'll tell you specifically here let me use an example let's just say you're a brewer and you have a bunch of of uh, or a coffee, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Very there, nice. you there you go. Um, I wouldn't want to say, oh yeah, just bring someone in, and the next thing I know, that person's picking up yard waste around town and taking away from what our whole plan was and what our contract states. Um, so the short answer is, yeah, we'd be open to certainly discussing it if we can't figure something out or we're willing to try to help and things like that we want to be a good corporate citizen in this regard as well where we we try to solve problems we're not uh there may be times that we can't do it someone else can okay thank you thank you mm -hmm. who else do i have uh, got a question from rana uh chat comment if we were to use an independent compost company at the school for food scraps can we do that the school was unable to get an answer from Republic services who did they uh, Rana that's your question yeah who did you reach out to um, I spoke to um, of course now hang on a second she's at the central offices there at uh, the administrative offices at in, in Douglas. So she was calling to find out if we were able to do that because we were talking about having a compost. Um, uh, probably Jennifer. Might have been Say Jennifer. Again? Probably Jennifer. Um, Jennifer or no. Pam usually are the two that take a lot of the calls. No, that's in the, that's from the city. Oh, okay. Uh, this, that's is actually, what I thought this is actually from the school. And I'm, oh, okay. I'm her sorry. name is completely escaping me at the moment. I've known her for okay. 15 years so I'll I would say if you have those needs just let me know um, now I will tell all of you I don't know if he's on Jack are you on I saw a Jack I saw a Jack. yeah can you hear me <laughs> yeah. I can what I, I apologize probably, I'm having video difficulties I am I am uh, Jack Brown is going to be replacing me as I'm retiring uh, August oh. 31st. Oh. So I did ask Jack to get involved. Um, actually, I was going to retire at the end of April, but with all the COVID-19 things going on, we everything kind of got delayed a bit. And okay. Like I tell people, I couldn't go anywhere anyhow, so <laughs> I might as well continue working. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I would say this, if you could send the contact you have my email now, and I will it's, get you in touch with Jack, and we'll ask Jack to follow up on, on those type of questions for the schools, et cetera. Okay, her name, her name is Kim Sharda, and she's in the central offices. Okay. So, Jack? Okay. So it sounds yeah. like, uh, Carrie, you're going to help um, Rhonda get connected with Jack. Yeah, if you, could, if you could, if you could, I don't know if anybody has a phone number or contact number for her handy. That would help. I, um, I do, and Carrie, I have your email, so I will just send you uh, an email right now and request yep. that you connect me with Jack. That All would right. be great. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great.
Great, thank you. And then I had a, mm -hmm. another question from Kelly. Does Republic offer a way for the Saugatuck Douglas public spaces, like the downtown business areas, to have separate landfill slash recycling slash returnable bins for shoppers to use? Have you done this in other towns? Um, we do have, if I'm understanding the question, uh, we have a number of uh, DDA uh, customers. Um, obviously, every single municipality and their downtown area is shaped differently with act, truck access and whatnot and the needs as well of the, the community and the businesses. So there again, I would say that one probably, I couldn't give a, a blanket statement on. I'd have to find out what, what your needs are. Uh, is it just a seasonal thing? Is it only when many of the uh, businesses gear up in the spring and then in the, in the fall or is it, constant year round but but there again if you you send some specifics on that okay we can yeah. get you answers okay so you all it sounds like you would be open to and again it kind of goes back to that same thing with composting you'd like the first right of refusal so to speak if we were to try to implement something like that for our business owners downtown right and the other thing is we have years of experience in all this stuff um mm -hmm. that I always say we're, we're, we're pretty cheap consultants because we're going to help you through the, the issue and whether, whether we're able to, to do it ourselves or we point you in a different direction or, or say, yeah, there's nothing we can do that wouldn't really be a contractual interference or anything like whatever the case may be. Uh, okay. You know, we're willing to work through this. Um, okay. Just work with us on it is all we ask and we understand what the questions are and the needs are because that's probably the, the harder problem is is understanding every individual's especially in a, in a business district um, every individual business's need got it okay uh, I think we're on 13 now yes sir the yep. public currently offers residents of the city of Saugatuck and Douglas a recycling cart service at no additional cost per amendment the contract waste hauler contract service is only available as residents of Saugatuck Township at a significant additional cost. Is there a plan to extend the recycling cart service to residents of Township at a reasonable cost? Would you be willing to work with residents of Township to move towards affordable cart service options? Here's what's happened in the, the Township. We used to have a contract. They got uh, recycling service at a much uh, more reduced rate because everybody was paying for it. And when you go on a subscription basis where you only those who use it pay for it, you're driving by down the same street, driving by all these homes, getting no business. So those ones that do ultimately uh, participate in a program have to pay more because they have to support the cost of it. Now, that decision was made by the voters to get out of that contract. They had two different opportunities to continue the contract that we had with uh, Saugatuck Township as, and Allegan County. It's a three-part signatory contract with three signatures on it. Um, my opinion, the way you're going to get the best rate is to go back to something like that. Now, I heard that maybe the communicate, I don't know, if the communication was good or not, I heard some comments to that, but there were two votes on it. So I would assume the word got out somehow. Um, that would be your best way to get pricing relief. Um, because as it is right now, it's, it's open market, but the market, as you can see, everybody's up because that's what it costs to go uh, throughout the township and only pick up a handful here, a handful there, and whatnot. Okay. So that'd be my suggestion on that one. Okay. Um, 14, the Douglas contract with Republic. There's a statement that states. Can we, I'm sorry, Terry. Can, can I ask a question about this a little further? Um, on 13? So, yeah, on 13. So, so mm -hmm. we, we did have internal conversations, the, um, the other people from Saugatuck Township and, 
you know, we acknowledge exactly what you said. And, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of wish that it, it went your way. Um, <laughs> so we could have some sort of contract. Um, but, you know, we do see that, you know, I wrote that question because I did, uh, um, I did call and inquire about getting a cart. And I think it was an extra $16 a month for the service. Um, which in this economic environment is just not something that is feasible for, mm-hmm. for my family. Um, mm-hmm. But we did also lose the yellow bags. And so we're paying the same price and not having recycling services. Um, and so, you know, we are kind of, you know, there's a lot of frustration in the community um, with Republic over this. And, you know, we really want to try to come to some sort of solution. And mm-hmm. it's not gonna go um it's 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 just not feasible right now to pursue um, a single hauler option with with the township um so anything that you could do to go back to the drawing board and and work with the people that do have contracts with you to come up with some sort of solution would be excellent like we're totally willing to work with you we understand the challenges that you're facing um we're kind of frustrated with it too um, but we need some sort of recycling option that's affordable, especially now that we don't even have, I mean, essentially we don't have any recycling services and we're still, you know, paying the same price when those recycling services were included. Mm. Um, as far as the single hauler, now there was two different issues that Saugatuck Township kind of tackled within a, a relatively close time frame. One was, do we continue the recycling program with Republic and Allegan County, the three-way contract? The other was a single hauler for everything. What I'm suggesting is you get back and get with the county to get a single hauler for the recyclables. Because the, the, I, I agree with it. You're probably not going to get any buy-in to get a single hauler for trash, but you can potentially get the buy-in. Monterey Township just transferred over to that program. They did not have a curbside program and they just uh, got on board with that. And we probably have about, I don't know, 11 or 13 communities in Allegan County that are part of this program. So it is successful. The residents and the municipalities do love it. It's just something that I don't know what happened in Saugatuck Township, but it didn't, it didn't, for some reason, the voters, I don't, and it may have been lack of education, um, but my suggestion would be to look at that. That's gonna be truly your best bet. Your second option would be try to get the township to put in a drop-off site The problem with the drop-off sites are they have to be monitored because when they're not monitored, we end up with a lot of contamination. It ends up a few people can ruin all the hard work that many people uh, have done to try to recycle things. So it can ruin an entire load, someone contaminating something. Those really are your biggest two options are try try to get the, the township to go back to the drawing board on the curbside recycling contract only. I'm not saying for everything else. Thank you, Carrie. Is is there (laughs) any way you could send me um, any more information about that curbside contract? I don't know if you have like a copy of the previous contract or something that we could go to the township with and say, hey, this is the way that we used to do it. Um, And maybe it's something where, you know, we can pursue again without having to do a single, you know, hauler just for, you know, for everything, but just for recycling. Just so I have something to go through and and give them. Yeah, I can, uh, I have a few contacts. I can send them through. I don't remember who's already emailed me, but I can forward it to whoever it was. (laughs) Um, Appreciate that. Some sort of information Uh, on it. So, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. This is Jack. And this is for Daniel. Um, so I'm looking at, I, I just pulled up kind of what our pricing is for the Saugatuck Township as if you called in for um, 
to request just the recycle. And maybe there was some confusion, but the $16.50 uh, you, you were referring to is a quarterly bill, not a monthly. So maybe whomever you talked to didn't quite clarify that that would be $16.50 every quarter for that service. Thank you, Jack. I was confused about that because it was my impression it was sixteen fifty a month. But that, thank you. That's you bet. Difference. Hey, we we saved you money <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah. Uh, so carry carry along those same lines. Um, so in the cases like the township, and not to digress too much, but by continuing to use the yellow bag and knowing that a great deal of contamination happens in that way, is there? That's as this question was we, posed to me. It seems intentionally misleading um, to continue to be using the yellow bags, and I don't know if there's an alternative correct. then for folks that's, or not. That's exactly why I went to the communities, Douglas. I think I mm -hmm. went before the board probably five or six times because I didn't want smoke and mirrors. I wanted to be upfront about how bad the contamination is and how how it was affecting everybody's efforts that everybody thinking that oh, we're doing the right thing by putting it in the bag and putting it in there. I wanted them to understand exactly what was happening. So, so no, we are not going to continue the yellow bag anywhere. As a matter of fact, um, Holland is going to be, uh, whenever they, they provide their own carts, we just service them. So whenever they get the carts in and I go to, to get those deployed, that's when they'll be officially transferring over, and that'll be pretty much the end of uh, yellow bags. Got it. And this was the only area, if you heard me speak in front of the council and Douglas, this is the only area that's doing that, and, and uh, it, just, it just didn't make sense economically. It didn't make sense mostly environmentally. Got it. So, um, I'm going to switch gears real quick. Another question I had, can we get a specific list of recycle items that work and those that don't? What would be the advantage of a program to eliminate the items that there's no market for or just plain are not on the list? So first a list of recyclable items and then the. Yeah, we can send you, we could send you the list. Again, we'll great. send it to the contact I have and then someone can disseminate that. That'd and then what was good. this? What was the, the second, second part? yeah the second part of that is what would be the advantage of a program to eliminate the items that there's no market for so I, glass is obviously one of these three through seven plastics you mentioned um, or those that are just not on the list the the problem with when we i mean we we get a lot of criticism anytime we we have to change the a list of what's acceptable. Um, so the way I look at it is, I'd I'd be I would love personally to say three through seven, but I think time will tell on that one, because what's happened is I was just reading something the other day. Uh, China kind of stopped accepting all this stuff, and that's where most of the three through seven was going. Uh, give you a quick story when I ran. We used to have a, a recycling facility up in Muskegon. When I ran that, I had to actually give away my PET, which is the number one, which I said had value. Mm -hmm. I had to give that to them for free. I couldn't sell it. I had to give it to them for free just for them to take the three through seven. Oh. Otherwise, I didn't want it. So, so that's where it stands. So I have a feeling that you're going to see as – time goes by three through seven probably is going to be some, some of those items, maybe not all of them, but some of them probably will start falling off. And I think that's going to be a natural evolution. So I'd say for now, uh, again, because if someone hears that, Oh yeah, my, my brother over in California, they recycle three through seven. Well, they're right on the coast. They don't have to pay to get it all the way out there. And right. so maybe that, you know, it does become monetary at some point as well, as far as being marketable. Um, so I think it'll take care of itself in the long term. All right, I see Ken Freestone has his hand up. 
Hi, Ken. You're on mute. Hey, there you go. Hey, good to see everybody. Um, <laughs> one of the things that the city of Holland is going to do along with the uh, transferring over to the carts is going to have a uh, website and a QR code on every cart so that anytime somebody wants to check about what is currently recyclable, because it changes so much, we can't do the tags anymore. We can't mm -hmm. do the labels anymore because they change so quickly, as you know. Mm -hmm. So we're planning on having a website for that so that people can look at that website anytime to find out what is recyclable. And since we're all in the same market here, mm -hmm. this will be, be valuable. Anybody will be able to use it. It isn't limited to city residents. It'll be available for anybody. So that's one thing that everybody, uh, it'll be good for all of us to keep track of that. And because it's, it's probably going to change every month. There'll probably be something on mm -hmm. there that comes off, something that goes on. But that's part of what we're intending to do when we, when we launch the new program. And um, it looks like it'll probably launch, we were hoping for January. We're still hoping that that's when the cards get delivered and everything starts. But um, still, again, there's a little flexibility with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So this, this next question that came through chat might kind of go along with that, with a, having a, a, a web page or a social media uh, main point. If we set up a program to communicate the information to the community, does the dynamic list make sense? Um, so I think probably the best way to address that would be to set up a, a web page or a portal, if you will, where folks can go to get that information. Is that mm -hmm. what you suggest? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Very good. Yeah, Thank because you. that would be, once again, as Ken just mentioned, it's, it's specific to your communities. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't do you any good to know what they're doing, like I said, in California, because it doesn't apply. Got it. Okay, very good. I think you're on question number 14. 14. In the Douglas contract with Republic, there's a statement that states that should Douglas and Sagatuck enter into an intergovernmental agreement to provide for the coordination and regulation of solid waste, recycling, and related services across the communities, contractors shall apply an incentive in the form of a line item discount on the invoices to the residents. What specific incentives would Republic consider if an agreement could be made between the two cities? Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I got to be honest with you what Chef was referring to there, but both communities from what I can see, have taken, have, have already received the pricing incentives and advantages when they transition from subscription to a single hauler. They did individually, but they are receiving them currently. So I don't think you're going to see any more beyond that since you already each have, uh, we already have contracts and have had contracts with you and, and those prices were taken into consideration back okay. when those contracts were made. That's fair. Uh, 15, does Republic have a goal for recycling our area. So in well, our area. bottom line, pretty much it's the goal is to get residents to participate. And, and we're just one of the uh, components of, of being able to get people to participate. Um, and we do what we can, for instance, the conversion from yellow bags to carts, that's that truly that's costing us more. You know, just so everybody knows, I know some questions came up when I went in front of the council. Oh, it's you're doing it for money reasons. We're putting an extra truck on the street. Um, had everything just gone into the trash, trash is considerably less than um, processing for recycling. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. Kent County, I always refer to them. Uh, because they're a governmental unit, so you can't say, oh, they're playing with numbers. You can't say that, it, you know, in our case, Republic is trying to make a lot of money off us. Kent County just came out and said it actually cost them net, after the sale of goods and commodities, around 105 or 100 to $105 per ton. Yeah. Yeah. To give you an idea, I do know uh, I don't know all the Kent County disposal sites. Jack, you might know that over there, but Muskegon County has a landfill. Their disposal rate's thirty-three dollars a ton. Kent County, so, Kent County's is Kent County's is thirty-eight dollars a ton to per, so, for landfill. Yeah, so so you can see what we're up against. Um, and when we when we made that change, we're putting more in it at the 100 to 105 that we could have let go in at 38. But we didn't want to do that. We wanted to be above board. 
We want to be honest with everybody. But a, a shifty company, if you will, or an unethical company, we just kept putting it in the trash. It's cheaper. So, so our goal is not everybody always agrees. Or they don't think of us. They think of us more as a trash company, but we're one of the largest recyclers in the country. Um, certainly in the state of Michigan, we do want people to participate. Um, and we agree. Basically, I was reading your statement at the top of the page mm -hmm. that you had for all the questions. Mm -hmm. um, we're right there with you. Got it. We support yep. that. How do we, how do we educate the residents to put in what is recyclable? That's number one. How do you get them to get away from recycling? The thought process of re recycling is so difficult. Oh, it takes too much effort. It really doesn't. It takes less effort with the cart actually, because you don't have to break in most cases, you don't have to break down boxes to get them in a yellow bag. You don't, have to put them in a little bin you just put them in your cart so we try to make it easier and that's what the single stream recycling is all about with the cart it's to make it easier and that's one of the biggest roadblocks to residents participating in in pro recycling programs perry i have a quick question it's rana mm -hmm. um i my my raise my hand button's not working oh um, sorry so i'm probably i probably missed it so just as, um, just as an aside, if it is not lucrative for you to recycle and it mm -hmm. is that much less to take it to the trash, or to the mm -hmm. um, landfill, why do you offer the service? Because sometimes it's just the right thing to do. Morally, and I've, I've said this, I've been doing this, I don't even want to say how long, too long. <laughs> but I said back in the 90s, early 90s, uh, and I was already a veteran at that point. Uh, I said in the early 90s that as recycling was really starting to take off, that it's, it's, I could see it. It's a moral issue. It's not a monetary issue. And if you make it a monetary issue, it's going to lose almost every single time. So you have to make that transition. To, it's a moral issue. Morally, it's the right thing to do. So if I can just jump in on that, because I agree yeah. with you, um, mm -hmm. but there's, there's a um, general feeling of distrust around the system, um, simply because for so many years we were using, or for so long we were using the yellow bags when it was mm -hmm. going directly to the trash. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do in our communities is try and figure out the most streamlined way to get people to recycle what's beneficial to Republic. And so we don't waste our time putting things in that are sure. contaminating the load. Sure. But it feels like um, it, it's a difficult process. I know you say that it, it changes, but as the provider of those services and because we're paying for those, if you're getting away from glass, then there should be an acknowledgement. I guess I'm saying this more for Jack at this point than I am for you since mm -hmm. congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> but it does you. feel like um, it, if it's a moral issue, then it's important that you're the person that comes forward as the representative of Republic to say that these are the changes that are up ahead. So could you please ask your residents to do better at this? Because when I came to Republic and our city council to say that the yellow bags were going into the trash, we appreciated you coming ahead and saying and explaining what was happening but that was initiated by a community member, not by Republic. And so I really feel like um, there's a transparency issue on our end. I just want to know how to get around it so we can support well, your business. Because if you're not in business, then it doesn't help us either. So we just want to work together. To right. No, I understand that. I do want to clarify something, though. Mm -hmm. I showed up at council without any request from anybody. Okay. It was me coming forward to say, remember now, I was there five or six times in front of council, so I don't know if you saw my first one or whatever. I was the one who approached council to tell them that, hey, we have a problem with the bags. I had never heard anybody complain about it or even know about it. I came forward with that information and said, there's an issue. And, and I want to clarify one other thing. I cannot tell you what Chef did. Okay. I wasn't privy to that, but I will tell you, in fairness to everybody, there have been so many changes to what's acceptable, 
as far as material, what's acceptable as far as contamination rates, things of that nature. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it used to be somewhere between 10 and 20% that was acceptable for contamination. Now you can't even have wet cardboard. I mean, they don't want, it, it's something as simple as that, which, which maybe that was part of the, the issue that when we took over Chef, there, that change was going on. We couldn't foresee it. We, no one knew in the entire world that China was going to drop the hammer. Yep. Yeah. So I uh, think so uh, about everybody by surprise. So we try to be transparent as transparent as possible. Um, okay. Like I said, I tried to be up in front and that was one of my statements to council when they asked me why, and, and they were really wondering, are we doing it because of financial? I said, no, we just don't want to, I don't want to be smoke and mirrors. I want to be out in front of this and let everybody know the bag system is not working. Okay, so, I'm so wrong on that if you went first, so I apologize yeah. for that if that was incorrect. So if I, if I may, so just out of fairness, I mean, um, you know, I think the whole reason for our committee being put together was to begin mm -hmm. to focus proactively. Um, mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do about what happened in the past, but our goal is right. quite honestly to uh, forge forward with a relationship with Pro Republic that is, um, that works well for everybody. Um, you know, and yeah, I mean, there's there's any number of things that went wrong in the past that we just can't do anything about. Um, but you know, what we're looking for from you and Republic and Jack um, is a way to forge forward to best educate people. So that and and obviously it's going to be on a continuous basis because things change. It's just the way it is. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's kind of my approach as the chair of this committee is to uh, remain very positive and and forge forward in a proactive way. So. Um, you know, I just wanted to say that before right. we go any Thank further. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we it's it's a big task that we've taken on, and you know, yeah. for us, it's a way to try to figure out how to educate people primarily, and maybe hopefully um, expand a little bit upon upon what we're we're able to do. You know, i.e., the composting type of component. So right, and with that yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, it, it kind of. I, I I apologize. I thought you were done, but. I, I'm done. I'm One done. of the issues that I've faced over the years was, was going back to the question about trust. One of the mindsets that many people still have now, this is kind of eroded over the years, thank goodness, but many of them think the stuff goes immediately right to the trash. Anyhow, that it goes right to the landfill. And that's been a battle that, that haulers have, have uh, uh, fought for years. And to be honest with you, um, if that ever happened, you wouldn't be talking to me because I wouldn't have a job. My company doesn't put up with that stuff. Yeah. Republic doesn't. But there has been some companies that aren't real ethical and they have done that. And that's the type of stuff that hits the news. And then all of a sudden everybody gets hit with this broad brush approach that it's going to right to the landfill. So that is probably one of your other biggest challenges. How do you get the residents to believe of what's really happening, that it is truly being recycled and not going to the landfill? Um, the fact that we're picking it up with a separate truck now with the carded program, I think that does help somewhat. But that's not going to be the end of that type of question or concern. Um, you know, as far as with Jack in the future, I would say the potential might be there. I suggested this years ago to one of my communities up north that their council meetings are all, all televised on a community access channel. Why couldn't they put on that community access channel a video that shows a truck picking up the recyclables, follow it for just a little bit, then then go and show the truck dumping at a recycling facility so that they know that it's actually being done. Um, okay. it, everybody thinks that's a great idea. Unfortunately, you know, my suggestion was get the, get the local colleges involved because they have uh, environmental studies. They have, uh, TV, radio, whatever you call that, mm -hmm. audio visual studies, they could be making it and getting credit and uh, it could work. And I think, you know, trying to get rid of that mindset 
will certainly help okay. contribute to the success of any program. So Carrie, let me ask you this. Um, how, much, how much of a problem would it cause if you all were to discontinue the yellow bags? I guess it must be in the township. It's the only place that, that there are the yellow bags still. Would that, would that really cause a big brouhaha to just discontinue the yellow bags? Because the message that's being sent, so this, I'm paraphrasing, it, it, if the if the yellow bags are really being contaminated so much and are just going into the trash until well, they find somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we are in the process of doing that. Um, Valley, we stopped the yellow. I mean, they're allowed to finish up what they have, but okay. that's their choice if they want to do that, you know, but we're not providing any more bags for them. Saugatuck and Douglas are out of it. Holland yeah. is on its way out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe in the township, Jack, you can correct me. I haven't dealt a lot with the subscription. Um, we've already taken care of that in Saugatuck Township, correct? Eliminated that is correct. A little bit. Yeah. We've, so done, the, we've eliminated everywhere. Saugatuck Township, Zealand was doing it, and we have uh, approached all residents. And I think Daniel recognizes that since he obviously reached out for a cart because um, bags are no longer available to those residents. We are okay. allowing to use the ones that are there, and then we're trying to extract as much as we can. But going forward, you can't, you can't get any more yellow bags. Got it. Okay. Correct. Ken, I see Ken Freestone has his hand up. Go for it. Well, it was, it was on the earlier one talking about the, uh, some kind oh, okay. of video or communication. I know that earlier on when – the city had the yellow bags. They did several videos on that. And I know I showed them everywhere. Anytime I could, mm -hmm. people would question it or doubt it. I would show them because I, I had a chance to tour the facility, see what was going on. And in earlier times, things were really good and it worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't great, but it worked pretty well. And the video worked extremely well to show people they're like, oh, I didn't realize I had never seen what it really what they really mm -hmm. did. So that was extremely helpful. And I think that um, you're, you're absolutely right, Kerry, probably some of the local media uh, activities through the colleges and universities might might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Very good. And Daniel DeFranco, you got your hand up. Yeah, so just wanted to add that, you know, we have like probably every community our our little Facebook informed groups. Um, and I will mm -hmm. say that there is widespread confusion in the township over the yellow bags. And it has okay. caused quite the controversy where some okay. people believe that whatever goes in the yellow bag is not recycled. Whereas some people do very much believe that what goes in the yellow bag is recycled. And I think that for the township, it would be extremely helpful to have some sort of public communication um, from Republic that, that explicitly states that you're not providing any more yellow bags, um, that you're moving away from that, and that going forward in the future, if you want to recycle, you need to opt into this cart system. Because just from seeing the, you know, these informed pages, there is, not only is there confusion, there's controversy over this. And I think it would be so helpful to have just a public communication, you know, a simple letter from Republic saying, we're not doing yellow bags anymore. Is that doable, Carrie and Jack? Do you know? Jack, do you, uh, can you pitch it on this one? Wasn't that communicated to the residents? Hopefully we didn't lose Jack. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was communicated uh, up through our, our bills. I can't, you know, sit here and say 100%, but as we sent invoices out to some of the, commun the communities that were using the yellow bags, we were announcing uh, the yellow bag program was being eliminated. Um, and I know some of the areas have, have, you know, put it on websites and stuff like that. Okay. But but we can, you know, I, we can talk to the, some of the powers to be to see if maybe we de need to do another reinsert on it and stuff. Okay, much appreciated. All right, and we've, I'm going to kind of help us wrap up. You've got one more question on here, number 16, Carrie. Is there a dedicated employee for the tri community area who addresses complaints and concerns in a more timely manner? I guess my first question would be Have there been, when you talk about the concerns and complaints, what type of 
complaints that we're talking about because for we have given um, the the cities at City Hall they have a direct contact for someone in the case of a miss that would be different than a contractual question or uh, a question about what is or isn't acceptable. So there's two different things here. One is going to be Jack. Um, and again, that's for residential. Now, when you start getting into commercial issues, mm -hmm. that typically is the municipal or the uh, commercial sales rep that would handle that. Okay. So it, I guess it depends on the specific, question I don't think there's any one person but there are people that handle it the reason uh, we give the supervisor the driver's supervisor's number directly to the municipalities is we want them to be able to contact them and in case our trucks in town if there's a complaint we get it resolved right away we want it that day we don't want to try to have it uh, well, they send an email and maybe the guy gets it the next day when he gets back in the office and then tries to do something like that. So we do give that okay. direct contact. Jack will have his number out there um, okay. as well for the residential, like I said, the residential issues and then, and then the commercial issues. Um, if there are commercial questions uh, from a business, um, we can give that number to someone as well because they should have their, their reps contact information oh yeah that i think that would be helpful as we move forward you can send all that to me and, then and i'll try and, to who is to jump in on that too depending on on what oh, what so this jack. jack so depending on what the issue is um we have a, a a fantastic call center that just like i did when daniel asked the question about rates that has mm -hmm. some of the you know it's like if a customer all of a sudden their can's missing or got a broken lid there's an 800 number that they can always call and it's the phone is manned all the time, obviously 300 people call center um, mm -hmm. to request different things. Okay. All right. All right. Great. All right. We've, uh, can I make much... a statement? Yeah. Who is it? Oh, it's sorry, Linda. Hi, Linda. Linda. Hi. I have no video. I'm on the phone. Um, to the call center thing, um, I tried calling the call center um, before I got my bin, and it was a nightmare. So I personally did not have great experience with the call center couldn't get a real person when i did it was the wrong number it, it was just a nightmare so maybe that's improved i don't know you ended up going through the city right uh, linda you came i went to a went? city a city hall meeting and that's how i got in this group because that's how you're on um, this committee <laughs> that's why I, that's just bad. so it it was a nice so it was not the best experience I have ever had and I've had some pretty bad ones like with Comcast but that this was probably the worst so can I, just so you know there are people ask, out here who've not had good experiences all right may I ask what your issue was I just want to see if we can work something around that well my issue was at the time I had gotten no information from Republic about the ending of the yellow bags I live in Saugatuck the city Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I watched one day as my garbage was taken, and there was no bag. And then they were like, "Well, you'll get your bag and you'll get your thing in a week." And I'm like, "Well, what about the recycling?" Well, we're not taking it because you have a bin, but I don't have a bin. And it took like a week. I think I went through Kirk. I went to the city council meeting, and then I got a bin. And then they took it, and then that same day. I got a call from the call center saying, hey, we're going to be delivering you a bin. I'm like, why are you doing that? You just took my recycling. I mean, it was like the one hand didn't know what the other was doing. Mm. It was just not a good time. Okay. So I just needed to put that in there. Yeah. I have no, no complaints with the service that I'm getting now that everything's on an even keel. Um, but I just had to throw yeah. out there that there are people out here that have not had great experience with call center. 
Uh, we also have, the reason I ask that question is because there's a number of issues that can be resolved just by going to our app. It's, it's a thing called My Resource. My resource. And, as long as, and as long as you have your account number, you can go in there, you can schedule, you can put in a missed pickup, you can schedule uh, uh, or, or request a, a, an additional cart or, or bin or or, or cart really, sorry. Um, uh, there's a number of and things you can do there And that's on the Recycle without, website? Well, it's, 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 it's a Republic app. It's called oh. My Resource. And there's a number of things you can go on there without having to, oh, the reason right. we do that that's is- That's for a phone that's online, right? That's for a cell phone? You can get it yeah. online. Yep, you can get <laughs> it on, you can get it through your cell phone if you have, uh, yeah, internet. Through your cell phone, but it's and an if internet. You don't. It's an internet. Well, then you you're back to probably calling. But this is for yeah. for those that have an the ability my, to go hey, online, Gary. so you, hey, so you don't on. have to. Go. Okay. Let's let's let so everybody my finish. Re, please. My my resource is a web based. It's a web based program. You can do it on your computer. You can do it on your iPad. You can do it on your phone. It doesn't make a difference. You can you can put it. You can do it from any computer, any phone, any any uh, iPad. Okay. okay, that's good to know. Thank you. That's very helpful. What's it called? My re It's a Republic app. It's called My Resource. Yeah, right. Linda, I'll I'll get all these minutes out to everybody and. Um, I love I'll that. I You're so provide. good, darn. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> in time. In time. Yep. Yep. Very good. All right. Uh, with that, we've run much longer than the hour, and if there's a burning Thank question out there, yeah, we really appreciate this, Carrie and Jack both. Um, no, my pleasure. If you can um, share uh, Jack's contact information, or you know, Jack, please reach out to me. Um, that would really be great, and I can um, kind of summarize that in my notes for everybody. Uh, it, Barry's got his hand up. Barry, go for it. You're on mute, bud. Okay. Thank you, Garner. Um, I've got a couple of really good takeaways from this meeting, and uh, our Republic people have been just fantastic. And, you know, one of my takeaways is that we have a partnership, and we can uh, make this partnership evolve. And it started out a little rocky, and actually I uh, asked Linda Escott to be on the committee originally because <laughs> of all the problems that she had. Now, this was in the very early days, and uh -huh. even... Even then, when I, uh, I didn't realize at that time, I had to call to schedule uh, to get the bin. And I figured that out, uh, and, uh, and I got my bin. Then they had a much harder problem. I said, well, here's a gal that can come in and help us solve the problem. But uh, my takeaway is the partnership opportunities we have, uh, that we've got some uh, talking amongst ourselves to talk about the uh, composting part of it. And now we know the challenges that uh, Republic has with composting. You just can't drive into town, pick up 30 pounds of coffee grounds. Um, <laughs> we met Jack uh, Brown, our new guy. And uh, that's my guy theory. Uh, it could be a gal theory, but I know a guy. His name is Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also the uh, DDA customers. Uh, that's something I believe certainly uh, Garnett and I are thinking about because Saugatuck does not have a DDA. Uh, it's been resisted over the years. We've uh, pr been proposing it on and off for probably 20 years. Uh, but uh, Garnett and I and Linda all see all the boxes, all the recycling uh, that's happening on usually Sunday night or Monday. Uh, we are looking for collectively some way to help that work through. Uh, so again, we have resources with Republic to partner on that. And uh, I think Daniel DeFranco brought up some very good uh, township perspective, uh, but you know a lot of that's going to be like we did, just uh, ganging up, getting the best deal when when we work together. Um, loved Ken Freestone uh, when he was on talking about the uh, the QR code and the website, and I don't understand all of it, but I like what I heard. But Ken is a fantastic resource, and. Uh, my resource app, another revelation today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I just can't say a great job that Garnett is doing, keeping this very diverse group together and on track. Very good. Thank you. 
Uh, I see Ken Freestone has his hand up. Go for it, bud. Yep, just one quick update. Uh, we did hear back from Jeff from Eagle, and we are going to be setting up in the next probably seven days, 10 days, we'll be setting up a, a composting conversation with him and a few others, and several of nice. you have signed on to that too. So he's given me a couple of times that work best for him now that he's kind of back in, in the swing too. So uh, look for that information on the, on the composting side. All right, excellent. That's great. I was wondering what had happened with that whole process. So thank you so much. All right, if we don't have any other burning questions for Carrie and Jack, we'll let them go and then I'll do a quick uh, next steps with everybody. All good? Thank you again for coming. Right. Carrie, Jack, yep. thank you thank so you. much. We Very really thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, so real quick, folks, in the interest of time, so there's uh, thanks, Barry, for summarizing that so well. And if you can share that with me, I'll be sure to include those in the minutes because uh, those were great <laughs> observations. Um, so uh, basically, it sounds like a couple things we've wanted to do as next steps. Um, a MRF visit. Um, I don't know if uh, the Kent County one is actually the better alternative or the one just north of Holland. Um, I think I'll visit. Ken, I'm going to reach out to you, Freestone, and maybe coordinate with you on that, if you don't mind, sir. I see you nodding your head. Sure. All right, very fine. good. Yep. Great. And then um, my, so regarding the survey, um, I think I shared this in a note with everybody, but I'll just reiterate myself, repeat myself. Um, from a timing perspective of doing a survey right now in our community, I don't think it's the best timing because we're still, a lot of our folks are still bouncing back from COVID shutdown. Many of them are business owners or rental owners and are up to their eyebrows. And, and I don't think that they would even have the time to respond. So what I'd like to suggest is that we wait until after Labor Day to administer that survey. Um, that gives me a bit of time to find um, and capture a resource to help me um, develop that for an online capacity. Um, and then, so thank you, um, Ken Freestone with the Eagle and the composting, and we'll follow up on that. So those are kind of where my next steps are going with this committee. If everybody's all good with that. Yeah, yeah. Garn, a person you can check with uh, online is um, online surveys would be Pastor Sarah Congregational. She does a lot of that stuff. Oh, nice, okay. I'll remember so there'd be that. a resource for you. Great, okay, very cool. Thank you. Uh -huh. Who else? Somebody else was chatting. Nope. All right, y'all are good. I hope this was worth your time. Rana, thank you so much for collecting all these questions. Um, before I let you all go, I do want to introduce to you Skylar Peggy, who is on this Hi, Skylar. Class. She is uh, an intern with, uh, from Central Michigan University. She is working with Isabel's and her, one of her number one projects is to help us set up a recycling and composting program. So nice. this will be a oh, huge excellent. help to her as a student. Um, because this is kind of one of her areas of interest. So you will see her smiling face from here on forward. And uh, hopefully when we meet in person, you'll get to actually meet her in person. So. Fire up chips. Fire up chips, exactly. All right, everybody good? Yep. Yep, see you All Friday right. for pizza. All right, we're adjourned. <laughs> right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone.